masyado malamig dito magsasummer na po sa UK. Wow, eh, yung Medyo... matagal na po namin hinihintay ang summer. <laughs> yeah, para wow. po yung jacket. Ayos. Mas no danda na sa kasi Madam Lori. Hindi na ako magdadala ng jacket dyan kung hindi na malamig. Uh, Maya pa ako uh, kayo. Dito na po kayo kayo sa, sa, Marami na magbilihan dito. Ito sa Pilipinas, mainit pa rin. Bayad, ah. As always na rin po dyan sa Pilipinas. Ang pros dyan na... Morning, Pastor Dan. Anong oras dyan? <laughs> Sa UK, anong oras po? Dito po, ano, mag-11 ng gabi. Dan! Ano, 11. Dito so, sa night watch po na. Night watch. Night watch. Night watch. Sa Saudi po, launa na. Sa Saudi po, launa na. Launa sa Saudi. Sa Karangyan po, 5.59 in the morning. Maybe ako tayo sa Bukuyo, bye. Same here. Same here. Same po tayo dito sa Hong Kong po. Pareho tayo sa Star dito sa Fiesta, 5.59. Ah, okay. Press pala yung time zone natin. Ano ko na lang si Ating Malin, 559 din sa akin. Nagagdal lang sila. Hallelujah. Dami natin, no? Ilan na tayo? Dito. Ito naman na umuno na tayo. Ayan. Morning, Pastor Dennis. Ayan na si Pastor Ted. Hello. Ang umaga, Pastor Ted. Morning, Pastor Ted. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. May kasama si Wayne. Good morning po. 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 Good morning sa lahat. Uy. Good morning mga pastors. Pastor Banjo, magandang umaga po. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Good morning po. Good morning po. Napintas. Napintas. Good morning po. Parang di na natulog Namayat na agsapa Namayat na agsapa Kada tayo ang amin Praise God Dami na tayo Napapay lang Nakariing tayo amin Ruan Kanina pa Masarap na pandesal, courtesy of Doña Marlene Cagongon. Ang sarap na talagang bangun lutong pandesal. Good morning, Good morning, Every day is a blessing. Yes. Good morning, Pastor Ted. Good morning. Mag. 
ating So magandang magandang umaga sa inyo lahat. Tayo po ay nasa TFBC TV Live for our prayer and intercession. Okay? Alright. Uh, ano lang po yun? Uh, 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 antag doon? Trial lang yun, no? Good morning po. Good morning po. Good morning po. Regular. Hello po. Good morning. Good morning po. Uh, are we ready? Ready na si uh, is uh, Dr. Dan uh, connected? Connected. Pastor Dan and Pastor Bans, are you ready? Huh? Okay, uh, we will start now. Uh, our guest is 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 connecting. Uh, baka mga nine o'clock ma connect na siya, so don't worry. Ah, uh. <laughs> magandang magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Let's welcome Pastor Dandan and Pastor uh, Banjo sa ating uh, pagsamba at pagpupuri. Okay, Lord, let's welcome them now. Hallelujah. Okay, sige po. Uh, umawit po tayo. Uh, awitin natin ang uh, how great is our God. Amen. Okay, sige. Tunay na dakila ang Panginoon ay makapangyarihan. Hallelujah. The tender of the King. Lord, in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. And thus, to hide, gentleness is more. Trembles at his voice. Hallelujah. How great is our Sing with me. How great Oh, 
Hey Lord, we thank you that you are our God, the Almighty God, the all-powerful God, who loves us so much. You are gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, but abounding in love and forgiveness. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful good morning that we are gathered together for your name and in your name. Father, thank you that you will glorify yourself in our midst as we pray and intercede and as we listen to your word to all of us as intercessors. Thank you for everyone who joined us, wherever they are. Thank you that you are there and your presence, your love, your grace, and your abundant power will overshadow all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord that we want, to be, we want you to be glorified and magnified. And thank you for manifesting your presence and your power and your glory in our lives and in our midst. Hallelujah. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Wow, we are, uh, we are international this time, okay? We have uh, intercessors from Hong Kong. We have intercessors from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And we have intercessors from London, okay? Of course, from Tarlac, uh, the state of Tarlac. All right. Uh, and of course, we have a guest, Dr. Dan Hammer from uh, Seattle, uh, Washington State. But we want to welcome, uh, of course, um, for the fifth time, ah, huh? wala pang absent. For the fifth time, si board member Dan Asaten. Uh, last Tuesday, wa, wow. last Tuesday, siya po nag-sponsor sa Highlands, uh, sa Highlands Mini Golf, doon po sa likuran ng Montessori. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, board member Dan Asaten, for joining us. And the mighty man from Kamuning, Quezon City, the senior pastor of uh, People of Grace Fellowship, uh, Pastor Joe Tupe. Magandang umaga po. Maya paabak po, Pastor Joe. And of course, uh, all of you are out there, guys. Thank you for joining us. God will do great and mighty things. So there's uh, uh, the senior pastor of God's uh, People of Grace Church Fellowship, Pastor Joe. Hey, Isang magandang abak keka, abe. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, uh, we have Dr. Dan Hammer. Uh, is Dr. Dan Hammer our mentor around? Okay. Can we welcome our guest now, Dr. Dan? Come on, uh, let us. Uh, show up, Dr. 
Dan, our mentor, our spiritual mentor. Oh, there's Dr. Dan Hammer uh, from uh, Seattle, Washington. It's a joy to be with you. I'm actually in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, you are. Morning. Uh huh. Is it out there in Phoenix, Arizona? Is it very hot now? It's only it's hot only hot in the two, two, three, four, 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 nice, four, nice, four, very dry, 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 dry temperature. Uh, but it's getting hot, right? Uh, no, it's not too bad. You don't get sweaty. It's just nice and warm. It's very, very dry. Hardly more humidity. Low humidity, yeah. Wow. Wow, that's great. Uh, who is with you out there in Phoenix? Who is with you out there in Phoenix? Oh, Terry, Sister Terry is with you. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, we will. We are excited to hear from you. Uh, we want to hear from you, and then uh, we will intercede. Uh, uh, TFBC family, our prayer intercessors, uh, I'm glad to, to welcome, we're glad to welcome our spiritual mentor, uh, Dr. Daddy Dan Hammer, okay? So let's, let's welcome him. Let us listen uh, 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 the message from the Lord through Daddy Dan. I want, I want, I want to greet you also, Sister Shrek, from Amazon. Okay. Uh-huh. 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 Uh-hu
Thank you very much. And let's listen to Dr. Dan Hammer. In the, in, in the book of Exodus, it says that in 17, it says that all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on a journey from the wilderness of sin, according to the commandment of the Lord encamped in Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people contended with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why is it you have brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with this people? They almost are ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. And you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it. Then the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So they called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the contention of the children of Israel, because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Now Amalek came and fought with Israel and Rephidim, and Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, and so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it its name, the Lord is my banner. For he said, because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. I, I believe this is really a picture of how we should be praying I believe for the great revival that God wants to pour out on all the earth. Many of the people of God are like the children of Israel saying, is the Lord God among us? And they're questioning the leaders saying, what is God doing? Uh, they're questioning the leaders saying, we don't have any water to drink. We're in a famine. We're in difficulties. We're in a testing time as the body of Christ all around the world. And there was no water for the people to drink. And the people started to rail against the leaders. One of the prices of being a leader is often the people will turn against you. Often the people will um, blame you for things that really are not in your control. And we have what some people have called leadership backlash, where God calls us to do something and the people don't like what's happening. And so they turn on the leader and say, why are you doing this? And so at those times, the leader has to go back to God, like Moses did, and cry out and say, God, the people need water. Uh, the people need you to do something. And the people were contending with Moses. And I think it's really important that you as intercessors pray for your government leaders, that you pray for your, your elders, that you pray for the leaders that are around you. They need, they need prayers right now. They need people to support them. They need people to pray in for them. For almost 20 years, I've had a group of people that come to my house. They lay hands on my wife and I. We've not missed a month in almost 20 years. They pray covering over us, protection. They pray for us. They pray for our children. They pray for our grandchildren. And they pray for the things that we tell them are on our hearts. And from the time that they started to pray for me, my warfare level went from way up here to almost down to nothing because I have a group of people that are always praying for me I can feel their prayers they become like a team and we see one of the things that God told Moses to do was to build a team 
was to build a team of people that would pray and hold up the hands of Moses and Aaron. And intercessors are to be people that hold up the hands of the leaders. So they supported Moses and Aaron. Aaron and her held up Moses' hands as he sat upon the rock. Our leaders are sitting upon the rock of Christ. But we need, we need Aaron and hers. We need intercessors to hold up the leadership at this time. He also told Moses to take the rod that he had used at the river. And he told him to take that rod and strike the rock. And we know that Christ was struck on the cross and, and, and rivers of living water flow because of what happened at the cross. So we as intercessors are enforcing the victory of Christ. We are causing as we pray to see the rivers of his living water flow through the nation. And as you pray, you're making a difference. As you intercede for the government leaders, as you intercede for the pastors and the spiritual leaders, as you intercede for the political leaders, you stand between them and God and ask God to have mercy upon them, to ask God to give them wisdom. And as an intercessor, then we stand between the people that we serve and also the enemy. And we tell the enemy that he will know, he will not have a right to touch these people. So in intercession, we stand between God and the people, and we stand between the enemy and the people, and we make intercession. So we pray and ask God's blessing on them and stand between the people and God and ask him for mercy and wisdom. And then we stand between the devil and the people and tell the enemy he will not touch them, he will not harm them, he will not influence them. That is the ministry of an intercessor that's so important, so valuable. It's very, very important that we realize how important our ministry is. And the people all around us are thirsty. They're thirsty for the living water. They're thirsty to get out of the situation we're in with COVID-19. I know for me, I, I, I long to come back to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I long to travel to see my friends. Mm -hmm. I long to do what God's called me to do. And I believe God's at work in the midst of COVID-19, but the enemy is also working and trying to stop God's kingdom from advancing. And as intercessors, we can be the people who pray and cry out to God. And so Moses, with the elders, struck the rock in the sight of all the elders, and they called the name of the place Masa and Meribah, because there was a, a, a contention. And they were tempting the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Part of our intercession is for people to not lose heart. Many people are losing heart. They're losing their courage. And the Lord is among us. The Lord said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. So as we pray, we can remind the people, as we pray, God will move. As we pray, God will send a great revival. God wants to move through the Philippines. God wants to do a mighty work, not only in the Philippines, but through the Philippines. God is, one of, God is using the Philippines as one of the nations that he will raise up that he will use mightily for his glory. Your, because of your hearts of service and your hearts of hospitality and your hearts of love, you have, you have earned an, uh, an influence among all the nations. You are one of the few people that all the nations of the earth accept. God has given you a very unusual favor as the Filipino people. It's because of the love you've had for people, the service, and God is very proud of your hearts. God is very proud of the way that your nation has served. And he's going to use your nation mightily. One of my dear friends is now in Thailand. And his heart is to move to the Philippines and to help the intercessory ministries of Asia. His wife passed away. He's been involved in ministry. And now he wants to come to the Philippines. And he wants to pray with the Philippine people to see God move by his Holy Spirit. And he's building a whole support ministry for people like you to see how can we pray? How can we help them and lift up their hands? So it's interesting. You have Moses, the leader, his hands are getting heavy. As long as he holds his hands up, the battle is being won. 
Joshua mm -hmm. is fighting the battle out in the battlefield. Moses is above on the hill looking over the battlefield. As long as his hands are up, the battle is being won. But as soon as his hands start to go down, the battle is being lost. Mm -hmm. And the enemy knows if he can distract the leaders, if he can get the leaders off track, if he can get the leaders discouraged and get their hands down, it will affect everyone. So part of the ministry of the intercessors is to lift up the hands of the leaders, that God will give them wisdom, that God will give them direction, that God will move by his spirit through their lives. So that ministry you have of holding up the leadership of the church, holding up the ministry of the leaders of the nation, praying for Governor Susan, praying for other people and in influence that God will give them wisdom. We're told in 1 Timothy 2 that we're to make all types of prayer, intercession, supplication, thanksgiving, and praise for those in authority that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And God will put people on your heart to lift up their hands, to pray for them, like Aaron and Hur. If Aaron and Hur would not have been doing intercession and holding up Moses' hands, the people of Israel would have been defeated. Joshua would have lost the battle. So we need to see how important your intercessory ministry is. Your prayers are changing the history of the Philippines. Your prayers are changing the history of your fellowship. Your prayers are changing the history of nations. And God's going to open nations as you pray. Many people have said history belongs to the intercessors. And I believe that with all my heart. That as you pray and as you lift up the leaders who are sitting on the rock of Christ and support them, it's amazing what goes on. And as the hands of Moses were raised up, Joshua was winning the battle. He was winning the fight. And the Lord said something interesting. He said, I want you to write a memorial in the book. And I want you to recount the hearing of, of Joshua. And I want to encourage maybe some of you to write down the answers to your prayers. To write down what your, your intercession is accomplishing. And tell the Joshua's. Tell the Joshua Santoses. And tell the next generation. Write a memorial. Write a book. Record Record what God is doing. Record the answers to prayer. Record the things for the next generation. And it says that Moses built there an altar. And it's important that we teach our sons and daughters to build an altar. To build a place of prayer for their families, for their homes, for their churches, for their communities. And Moses built an altar and he called the name of the altar, the Lord is my banner. Or the Lord is my victory. The Lord is the one that we declare his victory over all our intercession. We declare the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in the authority and the power of the name of Jesus. We've been given authority to pray and call on the power of God to come and God's power can show up. And the Lord said he would have war against the enemy from generation to generation. But your prayers are changing the history of the nation. Your prayers are changing the history of nations. Your prayers are going to make a difference to open doors. You're going to pray down heaven's kingdom on earth. When Jesus taught them to pray in the Sermon on the Mount, he said to pray, "Your, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He revered him, honored him, and he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we can begin to pray that his kingdom will come on earth in Tarlac, in Luzon Island, in the Philippines, in your neighborhood, in your community, and watch as you intercede. God will show you key places and key people to pray for. And as you pray, God will move in their hearts. God will do incredible things, just like he's done in your nation with people like Manny Pacquiao. Who would have ever dreamed that someone like that would have affected the world through his witness and his boxing? But God has used him to touch people's lives with the goodness of the gospel. And as you pray for people and you pray for leaders and hold up their hands, God will do incredible things. 
and we declare the victory of the Lord. We enforce the victory of Calvary. We don't come as beggars, but we come as sons and daughters of the living God. We come as kings and rulers, it says in Revelation chapter 1. He has loosed us from our sins by his precious blood and has made us kings and priests unto our God. So you are kings and queens and you are priests and priestesses and you come as part of the royal family to declare and enforce the victory of Christ in your region, in your families, in your home, and over personal issues and problems and all types of things. And when God speaks to you and uses you, it's amazing what God can do through you and what he can do in you. And we see the same type of principle in 1 Timothy chapter 2. We see, see where Paul says, therefore, I exhort first of all that you make supplications, that you begin to cry out for things that you see need to be done. You begin to plead with God. I've been praying and pleading for a Holy Spirit revival in our city our nation. America needs a revival. The world needs an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I've been supplicating. I've often been weeping. I've been fasting. I've been praying. I've been saying, God, we need you to move. I, I know many of you in the Philippines and your dawn watch. You're starting the day by crying out to God, saying, God, we want you to move. God, we need you to move through our nation. And then we need to make all types of prayers, thanksgiving and praise and worship and intercession and petitions. I like to keep records of what I pray so I can see the answers to my prayer. And I can share what God has done in intercession on standing on the behalf of another or standing on behalf of our city. And the giving of thanks be made for all men. Begin to thank God for people in political spheres and in schools that are in authority. They might even be opposed to the gospel, but begin to thank God that he's going to move in their hearts as you pray for them. That he's going to open their hearts. He's going to remove the, the blinders from their eyes. The enemy has blinded their minds so they cannot see the glorious light of the gospel. So I pray blinders off in Jesus' name. That they'll begin to see the glorious light of the gospel. That their hearts will be open to the things of God. That their minds will be filled with the things of God. They will be mindful of the things of God rather than the mindful of the things of men. So their minds will be full of the things of God. And I ask God to move on them and bring people across their path. That's making intercession. And I thank God for what he's doing. And it says we're to pray for kings and all who are in authority. We're to pray for kings and all who are in authority. So we're to pray for your president. We're to pray for your cabinet members. We're to pray for your government leaders. We're to pray over them and that God would bless them, that you might lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Where it says this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior in 1 Timothy 2. In verse 3, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave his life a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Paul said, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not mine, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. So I just want to encourage you how important your intercession is, how important your dawn watches are. The enemy tries to make us think nothing's happening, but God is using your prayers to make a difference. God is using your prayers to touch rulers and those in authority. God is using your prayers to bring down principalities and powers and evil and darkness. And it's good and acceptable in the sight of God that you pray for all men to be saved, that you pray for your kings and all those in authority or rulers and pray that there might be a peaceable life within the Philippines. And I believe that your prayer ministry is shaking the kingdoms of darkness. It says in Ephesians that God in his eternal purpose through Christ is, many, is manifesting his manifold wisdom by the church. 
We are teaching principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. So as you are praying and you are exercising your authority, things are going on in the spirit realm. The angels and demons are learning of the manifold wisdom and the grace of God through you, the church, as you pray, as you intercede. And I just want to encourage your faith to continue to pray, to continue to believe God, to continue to do what God wants to do in you and through you. And as you pray in faith, as you pray with a heart of love and thanksgiving, you're going to see like Moses, you're going to see Moses is raised up where you raised up their hands and you prayed for them and the victory has been won. Aaron and hers are going to come along. And, and I, I always say, pray for your leaders. Pray for God's wisdom, God's grace, God's love, God's power to be manifest through them. The enemy always goes after the leaders. He knows if he can get to the leaders, he can affect the other people. And many of you are leaders in, in intercession. You're leaders in different ministries and places. And I would encourage you to get people who will pray for you, who will hold up your hands. And then we need the Joshua's who will be on the battlefield. The Joshua's who are out fighting the enemy on a daily basis. We all work together. We all have our place. We all have our calling. But I love intercessors. I am one, but I love intercessors. I love what they bring to the body of Christ as they pray in the spirit, as they war, as they battle. And that your prayers are powerful. It says in James 5, 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman avails much. And your prayers are powerful. The enemy wants you to think that your prayers aren't powerful, but he's afraid of your prayers. The enemy's afraid of our prayers. That's what he fears the most, is our prayers. Because when we pray, we're crying out to the Father. We're crying out to Jesus and the Holy Spirit to move in our midst. And I believe that God's going to do some mighty things. Through uh, all of you as intercessors, he's going to do powerful things. And as you continue to pray as a group, it says, one shall send a thousand to fight, two shall ten send ten thousand. But when we're united in our focus, when we're united in our hearts, when we're united with God, there's nothing that can stop this kingdom from advancing. So I want to encourage you. I want to commend you. I want to honor you that your prayers are making a big, big difference. Keep praying. Keep crying out to God. And you watch people will be saved. People will be baptized in water. People will become disciples. They'll start to become prayer warriors. Leaders in the community, governmental officials will be touched by your prayers. And they need to know that we're praying for them. I've been praying for Governor Susan ever since I met her. Oftentimes, God brings her to mind, and I pray protection. I pray comfort. I pray blessing. I pray favor. I pray for wisdom. I pray the prayers of Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. I pray the prayers of Ephesians 3, that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ would grant her the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him that the eyes of her understanding might be opened that she may be granted the spirit of wisdom and that she might not, not only have the eyes of her understanding but God would open her heart and fill her heart with divine wisdom and that she would know the exceeding greatness of his power that she would not grow weary but she would be strengthened and refreshed and God would give her people to bless her God would give her people to encourage her God would send her the right helpers that the enemy will have no influence on her thoughts, on her work, on what she does, but that the blessing and favor of Almighty God would rest upon her shoulders. And God is honored when we pray that way. It's much better to pray than to complain. Yeah. Remember when the Lord said they were going to go into the promised land? He sent out 12 spies. And 10 of the spies said there's giants in the land. There's a lot of people that are saying, oh, the COVID-19 giants in the land. Uh -huh. Anybody tell me the name of the two, the 10 spies that gave a bad report? 
Can you think of any of them offhand? The names? They didn't make history. They what made, are the names of the two good spies? Caleb and Joshua. <clears throat> yes. They made this story. I want to be. I want to be amongst the yes. Jews, the Joshua and Caleb tribe. Hallelujah. They changed history. Amen. And God Amen. said, "I will take you to the promised land." They were the only two that believed God. Everybody else died in the wilderness. That's right. And God said, "Okay, if you won't agree with my word." The word confession in the Greek is homo legia. It means to say the same thing as, to believe the same thing as. So when I say the same thing that God says and I declare his word and I come in agreement with him, then he empowers his word and he speaks and moves through us. That's why the word of God is so important. Amen. And so because they wouldn't agree with God, God finally said, okay, if you won't agree with me, I will agree with you and I'll let you die in the wilderness. Huh. But I know you're people that are not going to die in the wilderness. You're going to be people that are going to rise up and claim the promised land for Tarlac First Baptist Church, for the movement that you've created, for the things God has done through you, for Tarlac, for the Philippines, for the nations. I believe that Tarlac First Baptist Church is going to be used to affect many, many nations throughout Amen. the whole world. Yes. So I want to encourage you as you pray, I want you to just have a new fire in your heart. I want you to be encouraged to know that as you pray, what God told you to pray and what you pray, he speaks to you through his word and you declare it. God is going to move and come into an agreement with what God says. I've had people say, well, this is so bad. The virus, we're never going to be able to do this. And I said, I'm not confessing that. <laughs> Amen. We started a Bible school in Thailand. 156 leaders are now going to Seattle Bible College. I taught 156 leaders for the Evangelical Fellowship of Thailand. They have 440 churches. Instead of sitting around and complaining about what I couldn't do, I said, God, you're doing something. Show me what you're doing. Okay. So I taught 156 leaders in Thailand for 10 weeks on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit moves. He's the connection between the King and all the Christians that are allowed to come, Aung San, that are allowed to come into Thailand. So now he's part of Seattle Bible College. A group from Kenya said, well, can we start Seattle Bible College in Kenya? A group in Nigeria said, can we start? So we started Bible schools. We started training leaders. We started equipping and empowering them to say, what can you do? We don't want to talk about what you can't do. We want to talk about what you can do. And too much of the church's focus has been on not what we, we can't do this, and this is bad, and this is, you overcome evil by doing good. Amen. So we said, what can we do good? So my wife and I, we went around the neighborhood and took cookies to all the people in the neighborhood. <laughs> we took Christmas things to them. Our church started to give away more money than we've ever given away to hospitals, to doctors, to gospel missions, to homeless people. And the more money we gave away, the more God blessed us. We have the most money we've ever had as a church. We gave more money away than we ever had. And we said, we're going to spread goodness. We're going to help people. We're going to become friends of the police and support the police. We're going to help other churches and build unity and love. So we not only need to pray, but we need to walk, walk out our intercessions. We need to be the answer to our own prayers. To pray, but also do acts of goodness into the community. To find out a need and meet the need. And we're all about making disciples. Jesus has called us to make disciples. That's the commission that he gave us. So we pray constantly. We've started home groups and discipleship groups. We have over 30 discipleship groups we've started on the first principles. People are getting saved. People are getting water baptized. People are getting healed. People are getting filled with the Holy Spirit. All through the COVID-19, the church is growing. So, Father, we thank you what you're going to do. Through these intercessors, I pray that a spirit of travail 
an anointing to intercede, to declare like Moses and Aaron and her. They created, they've created an altar at dawn watch. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is their victory. Yes, Lord. The Lord has already won the victory, and there is victory over these intercessors, and they will yes, enforce the victory of Christ. They will cause people to come into the kingdom. They will cause an anointing that will break the yoke of bondage. Mm -hmm. And Father, they will see nations open. They will pray over Governor Susan Yap. I thank you that her leadership will go to a whole new level. I thank you the blessings of the Lord of Deuteronomy 28 will begin to overtake her in a whole new way. You will give her favor with foreign governments. You will give her favor with leaders that they will sense the presence of the living God over her. You will open doors into China, into Israel, into Muslim nations, into places that have never been opened before for Tarlap. And God, you will cause your anointing and your blessing to be so upon her that people will realize there's something different about her. That she's a daughter of the living God. That she's a, a queen and a priestess before you. That she's a daughter of God. And Father, I thank you that you're going to raise up many people from this intercessory group to go even into the streets and walk out their intercessions to make disciples, to pray and see heaven come to earth in the hospitals, in the schools, in the businesses, in the education system, God in the neighborhoods, in the rural villages, in the big cities. You're going to open doors for Bishop Frank and Edith and others, Lord, to be a blessing. Yes. And Lord, I thank you. They don't have a can't do spirit, but they have a can do spirit like Joshua Hallelujah. and Caleb. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And I pray that the spirit that was on Joshua and Caleb is the Holy Spirit wrote about yes. them. He said yes. they were men of a different spirit. Yes. And I thank you that these uh, people are men and women of a different spirit. And I pray you to encourage them with greater courage to yes. boldly pray and to see answers to their prayer in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come Amen. on, guys. Amen. Thank you very much, Daddy Dan. And come on, let's pray for Apostle and Daddy Dan. Come on, let's pray for him and his family, Sister Terry, Amen. and his son, John, who is the senior pastor of Sunrise uh, Christian Center. So let's pray for his family, his household, yes. and Sunrise Christian Center. Come on, let's Let's extend our hand to Dr. Dan, uh, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy Dan. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the impartation of the powerful anointing this morning, Lord. Thank you for the impartation of your revelation about prayer and intercession. Thank you for using Daddy Dan, Lord, for, to encourage us, to inspire us, to motivate us, to carry on this uh, prayer and intercession. Lord, we are grateful and thankful for Daddy Dan and Sister Terry. Thank you that we lift them up to you, Lord. Continue to give them strength, good health. Continue to give them wisdom and revelation, Lord. And thank you that Daddy Dan and Terry have given them the anointing of influence, influencing many pastors, influencing many nations, influencing many leaders, Lord, influencing many apostles and even presidents and kings. Lord, you have endowed them, you have empowered them, you have imparted that anointing upon his life. Thank you for giving him wisdom and courage and discernment and more wisdom, more courage and more discernment. Lord, thank you for quickening his body so that he will stay strong and more strong stronger as Lord, ever, Lord, with Sister Terry. We apply the blood of Jesus upon their lives to protect them from any enemies attack, from, from uh, this pandemic, from any sickness, Lord, cover them with the blood of the Lamb. Uphold them with your right, right hand, Lord. And thank you for John and Grace, Lord, and his household as a senior pastor of, of uh, uh, Sunrise Christian Center. Lord God, I pray for more wisdom and more strength and more yes, uh, uh, healing be upon uh, uh, Dan, uh, John Hammer, Lord. I thank you for yes, using anointing, him mightily. Anointing, greater anointing, Lord. more yes, anointing be upon him, Lord, and upon grace, and upon thank his you. children, you Father. Out. Your presence and your power, your glory overshadow them, Lord. Lead them and guide them, Lord. More influence and greater influence be upon them. And the leadership of Sunrise Christian Center, Lord, and all the pastorate, Lord, and all the members who are of 
preach it and faith of the Lord. Surround them with your glory. Let your presence and power overshadow them, Lord. Greater influence in Seattle area, in Washington State, Lord, all over America, Lord, and other nations, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you for using Dr. Don and Sister Terry and John and Grace, Lord, and the Sunrise Christian Fellowship, Lord, and the Network of Apostles in the United States of America for using them mightily for bringing and spreading revival in America, Lord. Spreading and re revival in America in churches, Lord God. Thank you that you are God Almighty in America. Thank you. Thank you for Dr. Dan Hammer. Thank you for Brother John and Grace Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise, Lord God. Thank you for the impartation. Thank you for the revelation of prayer and intercession. The importance, Lord, of Moses, of Aaron and Hur, of Joshua fighting the battle, Lord, of praying for the authorities. We give you praise, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. This time, let us pray for our governor and the board members. Uh, and let's pray for Christy Angeles, our mayor, and the Kagawad. Uh, Lord, come on. Thank you for uh, ordaining sister, uh, our governor, Susan Yap, Lord, to be our governor, your God-given uh, governor, Lord. You have ordained her. You have appointed her. You have anointed her to be our governor. Let it give her strength and wisdom, Lord, and courage, protection, Lord. Let your presence and power overshadow her, Lord Jesus, and her household, Lord, even uh, our governor, Casada, Lord, vice governor, and thank you for our board members, and thank you for Dan Asatena, for his family and his household, continue to give them wisdom, your protection, your guidance, and your favor, Lord, your blessing, your joy and peace be upon them, Lord. Thank you for our Mayor Christy Angeles, Lord, and Aaron Mendoza, our Vice Mayor, and our Counselors, Lord. Thank you that you will protect them in your name. Thank you for giving them wisdom and a heart, uh, Lord, giving them the heart to govern our city and even our governors who giving her a humble heart, a pure heart, a compassionate heart, hunger and thirst for you and activate that faith and obedience in you, Lord. And Father, thank you that they are they are anointed to govern our province, anointed to govern our city. You have uh, ordained them, Lord. Lord, you have appointed them. You've given that authority and power and, uh, and that wisdom and favor, Lord. Thank you, Father, that this province will be transformed will grow, Lord. There will be peace, progress, and prosperity. There will be healing in this province and in this city, Lord. Lord, we rebuke any form of uh, COVID-19, any fear and worries. We cancel that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord. Let there be healing in this province, healing in this city, Lord. Proclaiming you, Lord, over this province and over this city. Lord, uh, for every Tarlakenos, Lord, for every household, Lord, you rule and reign, Lord. Let there be healing and you rule supreme in every home of Tarlak, Lord, of this province. We give you glory, we give you praise. Magharika, Lord, sa Capitolio, magharika sa City Hall, sa mga mayor, Lord, sa mga principalities of Tarlak, Lord. Thank you that we apply the blood of Jesus upon the capital and city hall and municipal hall, Lord, and Barangay Hall, Lord, and for the Passover. We apply the blood of Jesus for their Passover and feel your presence, your power, and your love, Lord. Thank you that there will be revival in this province, revival in this city, revival, Lord, in this province, oh God, under the leadership of our governor, Susan Yap, and under the leadership of all, all these board members and congressmen, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our congressman, Vicky, congressman, uh, Coanco and Villanueva, Lord, and all these mayors, Father, and all the board members, oh God. We give you glory, we give you praise. Maghari ka sa kanila buhay, maghari ka sa kanila pamilya, maghari ka sa bawat municipal hall, Lord, bawat barangay hall, sa Capitolio, sa City Hall. We give you glory, we give you praise, Father. Thank you, thank you. Now let us pray for our leaders in the church, our satellite pastors, 
Come yes. on, uh, Aaron and all, rise up and intercede for our pastors yes, and leaders. Yes, Hallelujah. So we give you glory. We give you praise, yes, Father. Thank you for our primary leaders. Thank you for our satellite pastors and their family. Cover them with the blood of the Lamb, Lord. Let your presence, let your protection, let your power overshadow them, Lord. Put a heads of protection upon them, Lord. I pray for more anointing be upon all of us pastors, Lord. More love, more holiness and more hunger for you, Lord. Boldness and courage in proclaiming your word, Lord, with so much power, with so much revelation, with so much passion, Lord, proclaiming your word, Lord God, in this province, in this city, Lord. Thank you for the provisions, Lord, of love, provision of strength, provision of courage, of wisdom, and of favor. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. And thank you for all the intercessors. Thank you for giving them the courage, the, the, the boldness, Lord, the availability, the willingness, and the anointing for intercession, Lord, that will bring revival in this province, in this country, Lord. Revival, Lord, in this city. We give you praise. Revival among churches. Unity among evangelical churches, Lord. Unity among pastors. Unity among uh, the churches, Lord. And unity in this province, Lord. Unity among Tarlacanos, among the mayors, among uh, the congressmen. Unity among the board members. Unity among the councillors, Lord. Unity among all of us that we will be united under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Under the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Revival, revival from the north, south, east, and west, Lord. Revival in every home. Revival, Lord. Hunger and thirst. Lord, faith in Jesus Christ, hunger and thirst for your word, Lord. Let there be revival, Lord. Faith in God. Thank you. When faith rises, Lord, we, you will expel fear and worries and anxieties. Hallelujah. And all this sickness and this COVID 19 will be expelled in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for health and healing. We give you praise, Father. Thank you, thank you. That there will be peace in the land. That there will be uh, protection and progress. And Lord, um, your presence upon this land. Hallelujah. Thank you for our president for giving him strength and wisdom, Lord. And giving him healing, Lord. And giving him passion, Lord, oh God. Hunger and thirst and faith in you, Lord. Even our vice uh, president. Father, we uphold the Philippines. We apply the blood of Jesus upon the Philippines in every four corner, Lord. In Malacanang, Lord. In, in the Supreme Court, Lord. In the Senate, in the Congress, we apply the blood of Jesus and proclaim Jesus Christ. Let there be revival, Lord, in this country. Revival in, this church, in the churches, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your word. And for the yeah. impartation, thank you for Dr. Dan, Lord. Yes, and Sister Lord. Terry. We yes. give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Uh, thank you for Pastor uh, Joel Kunanan. Kasama natin ngayon and some satellite pastors, including Pastor Joey Escaño. Thank you for joining, uh, joining us, Dr. Joey. And of course, the TFBC primary leaders. And John Balin, all of you, wow. Wow, it's 7 o'clock. Dr. Dan, thank you very much. Daddy Dan, are you still around? I sure miss you. Uh, when I are you coming? You. I miss all of you so much. You are always welcome, anytime. I know. I have to speak in the country, though. Yeah, uh, please say uh, hello to Terry. Thank you for John and Grace and that sunrise. They uh, talk Chris about you often. They miss you. I'm glad you have another grandson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yosef. Our little Yosef. Yes, hey, he Yosef. was born eight months old. Yes. He's just eight months old. Henrik, Henrik called my daughter Anna and Jason. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Their prayer had been answered. <laughs> yeah. We How sure long you... How long you will stay in Phoenix, uh, Daddy Dan? Until Thursday. It's All Monday right. here. Okay. I have meetings till Thursday, then I go home. All right. Monday, <laughs> Palambo, 
Just say hello to uh, John and Grace. Yes, I will. Okay, say thank you very much. Say hello Joshua and Bernadette. We, we pray often for all of you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. I love you. I gotta get back to the meeting. Uh, uh, board member Dan Asaten, uh, are you still around? Board, uh, the, uh, brother Dan, uh, board member Dan Asaten, is still around? Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. And alam mo ba kung gano kung gano karami na nood no Tuesday? Uh, one hour after our prayer intercession sa uh, Highlands Mini Golf, we have 7,900 viewers. Hindi man an announce yun, ha? hindi man na-announce, hindi man na-promote. Right then and then, uh, nag-live lang tayo. After one hour, there are 7,900 viewers. Okay. Wow, hindi yun. Thank you for uh, hosting us last week. Welcome to uh, anytime. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pastor Joel Kunanan, may anong ka ba ba? Joel? Opo, Bishop. We are okay. okay. O, oh, kamusta kayo dyan? Maya po, mabuti po. At uh, nagpapatuloy, nagsusumig ka. Kamusta yung training uh, ng cell training nyo kahapon? Gagabi. Ah, maayos beach siya pa actually second na po namin mamaya second training. Oh, okay mamaya. Mamaya akala ko kagabi. Okay, nakita ko sing announcement mo eh. So kung sa si Bill ba tsaka yung dalawang magagandang anak. Mabuti po, mabuti po si Salmer siya na po yung nagma-manage doon sa Nueva uh, Ecija natin. Ah, uh, yung milk team. Okay. Ah, uh, have you a uh, common saying school natin? Maayos po, Bishop. Mag-graduation na po kami next week. Nandito po si Pastor Manny Korea. Oh, nandito si Manny. Oh, that's great. Uh, Alright, so he's well. Okay, uh, tignan natin si uh, Pastor Joey uh, Tupi. Kamusta? Pastor Joey. Bishop, thank you very much. Kumusta? Dinatang nore... Pastor Dan. Dinatang nore bakal mo? Kumusta nore bakal? Dinatang nala? Darating na this month yung ano, yung mga poste natin galing Vietnam. Yung mga bakal mo, I-beam, no? Wow. Kumusta si Sister Amy? Sister Amy, how is she? Como sai Sister Amy, uh, Pastor Joe? She's still, she's still busy. <laughs> busy pa rin sa building uh, the principal ng Christian School. Wow. Lagi right. siyang gumagawang, lagi siyang gumagawang curriculum. Wow, that's great. So, uh, please say hello to Emmanuel. To Manny and uh, to Auntie yes, Amy. Thank you. And they they have beautiful. also uh, sabayang prayer meeting natin sa, ano, sa kanila. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Ba, meka, meka apat o lima na kang beses. Uh, wow. wow, that's great. Thank you. Wow, to all our intercessors, uh, you are blessed, you are favored. Until next Tuesday, and of course, kayo, everyday kayo nagpipray. Uh, uh, sino yung guest natin sa, uh, sa Thursday, darling? Pastor Bob. Sir Pastor Bob. Sir Bob. Sir Bob. Sir Bob. Okay. Sister Bob and Sister Belen on Thursday. Okay. So, wow. Uh, darling, is my wife yes, around? Yes, Bishop. Uh, can Dito you, po ako, Bishop. Can you, yes, uh, <laughs> can you request Wei Tiang Hao of Singapore to be our speaker, uh, our uh, to give inspirational message? Okay, Bishop. Next Tuesday, we will try to post uh, Reverend Wei Tiang Hao next Tuesday joint prayer gathering. Uh, just like uh, what uh, Danny Dan did for 30 minutes okay. and give update. Yan, 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 yan. Uh, updated just a worldwide. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Okay. Actually, Bishop, guest ka this Friday sa Global Prophetic Prayer Watch. Uh, Nag-message pala siya. Uh, oh, I am, I am a guest. Wow. Okay. I will guess what? 
I will guess. <laughs> so Global Prophetic Prayer Watch, <laughs> uh, hosted okay. by Elder Wei Chang Hao. And then we will invite him next week, Tuesday, mm -hmm. prayer okay. gathering. Book. All right. Wow. Uh, thank God. To all our international intercessors, thank you for joining us. I know some of you, you have to wake up early in the morning. Uh, Weng, ano oras dyan sa Riyadh? Uh, alas dos na po. Two nine ng madaling araw. <laughs> madaling araw. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. Ah, matitig okay. yan. Mala, matitig sacrifice siya. yan. Ah, Michelle, Michelle, meron tayong joiners from UK and Hong Kong. Wow. You, uh, si Glo. Anong oras kayo dyan sa London? Glo, masangke. 12 o 9 po, Bishop. Noon, noon time. O midnight? Gabi po. Okay. Midnight po. Midnight, okay. Bishop, okay. meron din daw from Canada. May nag-update sa akin dito. Sino? Sino sa... Kathy. Kathy from Canada. Kathy, what time in Canada? You are three hours from the east or 15 Kathy, hours from the east? Uh, and up. then, I know from the west, 15 hours. From the east, 12 hours uh, behind mm -hmm. lang. Okay. Kathy, what time? Four, where are you in Canada, five. Kathy? Ano po? Um, 4 p.m.? Hi, Bishop. Kumusta po? Hi, 4 p.m. Oh, so you are in the, in the west coast? Oh, west Vancouver po. Hi, Mami. Oh, nasa Vancouver. Okay, sa west Apa. coast ka. Wow. Hi, Apa. That, that's great. Uh, of Dr. course, Fred. si Dr. Rita Fred. Beltran sa Hong Kong. Hong Kong. And then Dr. si Alice Angeles sa UK din. Dr. Uh, Fred. Oh. Dr. Fred Atimina. Saan si Dr. Fred Atimina? Atimina, Dr. Fred. Yes. Yes. Oh, Ito po sila, Bishop. Uh, is Sheila joining? O oh, kasama natin si Sheila o ano? May, may work na, from Bishop. Nagpadala siya ng maraming pakwan. Meron akong pack 1, pack 2, pack 3. Tatlo pack 1, no? Ang tatamis. Wow. From, from Alberta, pinadala niya sa Pilipinas, no? Wow. Okay. Uh, do we have another, uh, do, uh, do we have another international, uh, ano? Uh, from Riyadh, UK, Canada. Si Anita Bishop, si Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Our faithful Anita. Ayan pa si Anita. Si Silo Shen, sumama ba? Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, the, uh, kayo mga intercessors, keep up the good work. Were you encouraged by the message? That's a very powerful message. Yes, very powerful message. Yeah, that's a very powerful message. Keep up the good work. We see the importance of prayer and prayer, intercess, uh, yes. the prayer Thank warriors you and Thank the intercessors. You for so keep up the good work, carry on, and revival is happening. Not coming, it's Hallelujah. happening already. Yes, Hallelujah. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you pala kay Doña Marlene Kagongon. Hallelujah. Bishop, may dala si Ate Rubina, breakfast, pancakes, burgers, lansones yata yung iba rito. Oh, punta na kayo dito sa church. Dito kayo pagkikain. Dito kayo kahapon ni Pastor Jun Balete. Birthday ni Kuya Jun, Pastor Jun Balete kahapon. He is 45 years old. 45 years old. 20 years ago, okay. or 21 years ago. Well, good morning. Pinagpala na tayong lahat ni Lord. Amen. Na may time pa sa TMBC TV Live. Mami at 9 o'clock. Mabuhay po tayo lahat. Thank you, Pastor Joel. Thank you, Pastor Joel. Uh, 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 Joe Tupe. Thank you. Live stream po tayo sa Facebook. Dana sa 10 to all of us. Mabuhay po tayo lahat. See you then. It's a beautiful yes. Tuesday morning. Okay. Amen. Amen.